Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are going to work up the smallest size of my new tiny berry dog sweater. It's important to note that there are two different patterns for this berry dog sweater. There's this tiny version that uses a Brava sport yarn or a sport weight yarn with a six millimeter crochet hook and then there is a regular size dog or so a small, medium, and large that uses a worsted weight yarn with an eight millimeter hook. So be sure to follow along with the actual pattern that you are making. Everything other than that, as far as um, how the general construction of these sweaters is the same, so you can follow along with this video whether you are making the tiny version or the regular size version. Of course, you'll want to follow um, the sizing chart to determine which size you will need to make for your pup, and of course, read through any of the pattern notes as needed. There is a gauge swatch pattern included for the uneven berry crochet stitch. There is also a video tutorial for this if you need it uh, before you get your feet wet with this pattern. So as you can see, we have one of these dog sweaters here. This is the extra small, this is the extra extra small, and today we will be making the extra 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 small uh, for video purposes. So you can see that we start with the neck here. We build onto the neck with the body until we reach the armhole rows. Then we create those rolls, or rows, continue with the body, and then we have our tapering that goes down towards the base of the tail over here. So as I said, the concept for all of the sizes is the same. This does match a human version of the Wildberry pullover. So if you are following along or you would like to make yourself one to match your pup, that is perfectly fine. Follow along with the... Um, neck here. This is the bottom band of the human sweater and then we build the body up. So if you follow along here and follow with this first row of the berries, after that it's not the same but if you are having tr difficulty with that bottom band, follow along here and that will suffice for the human version as well. So let's go ahead and get our materials and supplies started. For this, I have a nice bright yellow sport weight yarn, and I have my six millimeter crochet hook. This is a size J, beautiful, ready to go. I've gone through all of this, and I am ready to start with my neck band. So let's get started. For the tiniest size, I will be following the smallest size to the left in the parentheses. The smallest size is always going to be the one that is first listed. So I'm going to do my chain seven, and we are creating that half double crochet slip stitch ribbing. So I've got my slip knot. I am ready to do a chain seven. I'm going to do a half double crochet slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and in each to end. So I'm going to pretend like I'm doing a half double crochet so I yarn over. I'm going to go into the second chain from my hook. I'm looking at the back bar here and I'm going to pull up that loop right here. Now instead of completing that like a traditional half double crochet, I'm going to hold the base of it with my thumb and pull it straight on through those other two loops. And that is a half double crochet slip stitch. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing in all of these chains all the way to the end. When I get to the end here, I should have six half double crochet slip stitches in a row. Now I'm going to alternate the rows of half double crochet slip stitches with rows of regular slip stitches that are made into the previous row's third loop. That sounds like a lot, right? It's easier than it sounds. First thing is I'm going to turn my work so that my yarn is in front like this. I'm going to hold it up and out of the way like this, just kind of push it off to the side, and I'm going to slip stitch into that third loop only. So you're looking for that horizontal bar that runs across the back of half double crochet slip stitches, right? Or any half double slip uh, crochet stitch. So I'm going to pull up my loop here and then pull it straight on through for a slip stitch. 
going to do that in each stitch all the way across, going just in that third loop there. Slip stitch, next one, slip stitch, next one, and when we get to the end, we should have six slip stitches. Now when, in this last one, I like to go through both sides of this V like this. There's two parts to that outside stitch. I like to go into both of those and pull up that loop, just like that, that slip stitch. Beautiful, so now we have that slip stitch row. Let's do this a few more times uh, together. So we are ready for a half double crochet slip stitch row. So I'm going to not turn or anything. I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into that first stitch right here. That's that slip stitch going under both sides. And I'm going to complete my half double crochet slip stitch right here. Do it again. And each of these slip stitches all the way across the whole row. This last one looks like it's a little bit cockeyed. We're going on to go under both of these, just like that, to complete our final half double crochet slip stitch. Now we're going to turn with our work in front of us, or that working yarn in front of us, hold it out of the way, and we're going to do slip stitches in just that third loop only, all the way across. I know this this ribbing isn't super fun to learn, but once you get going, it goes so fast and it's actually pretty quick and pretty easy, pretty mindless once you get going. Remember on the outside here, I like to go through both sides of that outside stitch. I feel like it creates a much cleaner edge. So now we've done our slip stitch row. We're ready to do our half double crochet row. So yarn over. Do not chain or anything. We're just going into that first slip stitch there. Hold the base, pull it straight on through those other two. And we're just going to half double crochet slip stitch until we have six of those. And that last one looks a little vertical, right? That's okay. That is what we want. Perfect. So now I'm going to just continue alternating those half double crochet slip stitches, which we just did, with those rows of slip stitches that are only going into that third loop only. Now, um, when you're following along with your pattern, I do recommend having it printed off because it's just so much easier and we can cross things off as we go. So we, obviously we've done all of these. Now we're up, up in this area here. Follow along. So with the size that you are making, since I'm making the smallest size here, I'm going to continue making these neck ribbing rows until I have 34 of them total. So a good way to count these rows as you're going let me get one more row of these slip stitches done and I'll show you an easy way to count these rows. Remember the final one of those slip stitch rows goes through both sides of that outside stitch there, right? So when you're counting these rows, a great way to do that is so you see this first half double crochet row here, half double crochet slip stitch row, you know that the one in between that is a slip stitch row. So that is row two. So I count by the slip stitch rows only. So this is two, this is four, we just made six, and I will continue on until I have those 34 rows for the tiny size, the smallest size of the tiny sweater, and then we will hook up and complete the rest of this dog sweater together on video.
So I've just finished my 34th row of my slip stitch ribbing and it's absolutely beautiful. You might think that this looks a little bit too small, especially if you're making the human version. It is a little bit dense when you start. Go ahead and pull it to relax those. Look at those slip stitches in there, aren't they beautiful? So it does relax very nicely and that also helps to correct the slight slant that we get when we work with this stitch. Now we are ready to join to the top of the first stitch made. So we've ended off with a slip stitch row here. We are ready to join to the top to form a circle, which will be the neck opening. So you go ahead and insert your hook into the top corner over here, and we are going to slip stitch those together. Beautiful, and so that is our little neck opening, right? Or the bottom band of the body, if that's what you're doing. Now we are ready to start on the chest. So in order to do that, we are going to chain one and turn, and we're going to look at the wrong side. You can see that this is the, the inside and this is the outside, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to find all of these half double crochet slip stitch row ends, so these bigger holes here, we're going to go into each one of those and create a berry. So let me move this out of the way. First thing is to slip stitch to the first half double crochet slip stitch row right here. I'm going to slip stitch those just like that. You may find it helpful to mark this stitch, especially if you're just starting out with the uneven berry. Sometimes it can be very difficult to find that first stitch there. So I'm going to do a berry in the same space. So I yarn over, go into that space and pull up a loop, chain one, then yarn over, pull up a loop in that same space. So you should have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five. Chain one to close that stitch and we are ready to move on to the next half double crochet slip stitch row end. That's such a mouthful. So we're going to do our slip stitch to the top of that or to that next row end. And now we're going to do a berry in that same. So yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one, yarn over, pull up a loop in that same space, five loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all five, and chain one move my stitch marker to be more secure over there and I'm going to slip stitch and bury in the next row end. Chain one, slip and bury and I'm going to do this in each of these row ends all the way around until I get back to where I started. When we get back around here, before we do this final uh, berry and join, let's go ahead and count our berry stitches to make sure that we are on track. So for the so smallest size, I should have 17 berries going around. Fifteen, sixteen, and I have one more row end remaining, so that is perfect. I'll go ahead and do my slip stitch and bury. Do your chain one to close the stitch, and now we're going to join to the top of that slip stitch there, or not to the top of it, but just join to that slip stitch there. So remove your stitch marker. Join to that slip stitch. Beautiful. And now we are ready to start round two. So for round two, we're going to turn slip stitch in the top of the first berry, and then we're going to alternate single crochets and slip stitches. Single crochets and slip stitches. Repeat that all the way around until we get to the end. 
Like I said, it is beneficial to have that pattern printed and handy so you can cross it off or make notes as needed. So we're going to turn, we're not chaining or anything, we're going to do a slip stitch in the top of the first berry. So this berry right here, each berry consists of two, right? So when we made these, when we made these, excuse me, we've got this bigger, bigger loop here and then this is the chain one to close the stitch. When we make all of our slip stitches in these rows that we're about to do, we always want to use the bigger part of that berry stitch. So turn, we're going to slip stitch to the top of the first berry, so into this bigger portion of that berry right here. We're going to slip stitch to that. That stitch might be a little bit big, so feel free to just pull it just a little bit tighter, just like that. And again, you may find it helpful to mark that first stitch made so that you know where that is. Now we've done our slip stitch in the top of that berry. Now we need to do a single crochet in the next slip stitch. So right here, a single crochet. And now we're just going to alternate a slip stitch in the top of the berry and a single crochet in that next stitch. So remember, we're going into the larger portion of that berry there and doing a slip and then a single crochet in that next right down here. And we're just going to alternate that slip, single, slip, single, just like that. So we've gone all the way around, almost. We'll do our slip stitch in the top of that final berry. And now we've got this one stitch remaining right here. We're going to do three single crochets in this final stitch, and that is going to be how we are increasing to create that chest portion of our dog sweater. So we've got one, and I do like to pull that leg down just a little bit. Two single crochets. Pull that leg down just a little bit and then three and again pull that leg down just a little bit we're going to join to the top of that first stitch here which was that slip stitch in that berry so there we go with our completed round two Nice. You can see that we've got this over here. We can go ahead and weave in this uh, beginning tail if you like let's grab that Get that done and out of the way so that it will not be in our way any longer. Go ahead and thread your yarn needle. Come over to this side here, and I'm going to find these two loops just like this. Remember when we were doing those um, half double crochets, we had to kind of a wonky stitch there. That's that stitch there. So I'm pulling that and going up through the corresponding side on the opposite. Nice. And so now I'm going to pull this yarn down, and I'm just going to sew stitch for stitch just like this and close up that neck nice I'm going to just kind of weave in my ends here just going through these berries of that first row
nice. Just go ahead and clip that yarn. And now that's out of the way and our neck is completed and we are ready to continue on. So now that we are ready to start with round three, this is going to be another berry row. Your odd numbered rows are always going to be berry rows and your even numbered rows are always going to be the slip stitch, single crochet, slip stitch, single crochet. So now I'm going to insert my hook again so that we can pick back up and I'm going to do a chain one and turn. Now you've got these three single crochets that we created at the end of that final or that last row, right? So we're going to do a berry stitch in the first one of those right here, berry, chain one, and now we're going to slip stitch to the next here. Slip stitch, and now we're going to do a berry in the next. Chain one, slip stitch, and berry. And we're going to alternate those all the way around. And since we began with a berry stitch on this round, we're going to end with a slip stitch on this round. It's always the opposite of how you began the round. We've got these last two stitches here. I'm going to do a berry in this one and a slip stitch in this one and join to that top of the first berry. So a berry in this final single crochet. And slip stitch to that final stitch there and join to the top of that first berry. I realized halfway through I didn't put that stitch marker in there, but it is this one right here. You can see the knot where we turned or that you know, bump where we turned and slip stitch there. So now we are ready for round four where we will do another increase round but we are going to stagger it so that the increases aren't always on the same side of the sweater. That would make it slant off to the side. So in order to do that I'm going to do a chain one and turn and this is a round four which is an even numbered obviously so it's going to be one of those single crochet slip stitch rows. So first thing is to place three single crochets in the first slip stitch. So this is that slip stitch that we just made to end that row. We're going to place three single crochets right in that stitch there. One. And again, I'm going to pull that leg just a little bit. Two. Pull the leg. And three. Pull that leg. All right, now we're going to do a slip stitch in the top of the next berry and a single crochet in the next. Slip, single, and for this round, because we started with a single crochet, we are going to end with a slip stitch. So our final stitch is this slip stitch here and we are going to join to the top of the first single crochet made which was right there. Beautiful. So now we are ready to start round five. So in order to do round five we are going to do a berry stitch row, right? So we're going to turn we're going to do a slip stitch in the first stitch. So as you can see, this is my join here. Let me get my tapestry needle. This is where I joined. That's my slip stitch to join. This is the actual final slip stitch that I made of that row. So that's where I'm going to do my slip stitch there is in that actual slip stitch, not the slip stitch where I joined to the first stitch, right? A little confusing, but again, Perhaps we should be using our stitch markers. There's my slip stitch in the top of that first one. Now let's go ahead and do a berry in the next single crochet. 
And that's something to note that will keep you on track also with the uneven berry stitch. When you make these, these slip stitches will always go in the slip stitch from the previous row on this portion. And the berries are always going to go into the single crochets from the previous row. So always bury in the single and slip in the slip. the end of round five here I'm going to place a berry in that final stitch right here chain one to close the stitch and join to the first slip stitch made again a great reason to have that marked right there beautiful now when we are looking at this pattern we've got um, on some of these sizes, you are going to repeat round six, seven, eight, and nine. If you're doing the extra small, small, medium, or large of the other pattern, you will repeat these. Sometimes you'll repeat them more than once based on the size that you are making. The larger the sweater, the more repeat rows you have because it needs to be larger, right? So for the extra, extra, extra small size, I am ready to jump to the armhole section below, which means that I am ready for round six. And what that means is that I'm going to reinsert my hook. I'm going to turn and I'm going to slip stitch in the top of that berry, right? The big portion of that berry, just like always. I'm gonna slip stitch there and I'm going to single crochet in that slip stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch and single crochet all the way around until we get to the end, and then we will be ready for the armhole row. End with a single crochet in that final, and we're going to join to that first slip stitch made here. And so now that is your armhole round prep. And now we are ready to do our armhole round. You can see that if you lay it flat, it kind of goes farther down than it does up. That's because we did all of those increases down there. And remember, if you are making a larger size, your increases, here's on this side of the seam and then this side of the seam. If you have more rows to do, they're always going to stagger like this because you repeated those four rows in order. So let's prepare to do our armhole row. When we create the armhole rows, we are creating a berry stitch row. So what we're going to do is chain one and turn. We're going to do a berry in the next single crochet. So this one right here, we're going to do a berry right in here. Chain one to close that stitch and slip stitch in the next stitch there. Now, depending on what size you are making, you might do another berry or two. For the size that I am making, we just have this one berry here. Now I'm going to do my chain for my armhole. So I'm going to do a chain five for this size. We're going to skip seven stitches. and we're going to slip stitch in the next, and that should be a slip stitch from the previous row. Make sure you're not making that one too tight because we will need to get into that on the next round. Now that we've done that slip stitch there, we're ready to do more berries. So we're going to bury in the next stitch here, which should be a single crochet. slip stitch in the next and we're going to do that as many times as stated for me I need to do that a total of nine times so this is number one I'm going to do that eight more times and then I'll create that second armhole
Now before continuing on, I'm going to make sure that I have done that the correct number of times. So I should have nine berries. Beautiful. Now I'm ready to do my second chain for my other armhole. So I'm going to do my chain five, just like I did at the first half. Skip seven. Slip stitch in the next. And then we're going to do one more berry, slip stitch, and join. So berry in that, stitch there, slip stitch to the last, and join to the top of that first berry here. Awesome. And now that armhole has been made. Pull that just a little bit tight and we are ready to do a chain one and turn. Now we're going to place a single crochet in this slip stitch here, that final slip stitch of that row. So a single crochet right here. Slip stitch in the next berry. And again, if you are working a larger size that has more berries here, just complete that until it tells you not to, until it tells you to stop, right? For as many times as stated. I'm going to do a single crochet in this slip stitch here. And now, working across this chain, I'm going to slip, single, slip, single, slip. So I should start with a slip and end with a slip. So going into that back bar of that chain there, slip, single, slip, single, and then a slip in that last one. We're going to do a single crochet there. And now we're going to pick up with the slip, single, slip, single, all the way around or until we get back to that other armhole chain. And we'll do the same thing that we just did. So single in that chain that's bracketing the armhole, right? Now we're going to do a slip in this one. And that's why we didn't want to make those stitches too tight because they can be hard to get into. Single, slip, single, slip, single, I'm going to slip, now we're going to do one single crochet, oh no, we're done, we have done our single crochet in that slip stitch, we've done our slip stitch to the top of the next berry, we have repeated that all the way around, and so now we are ready to join to the first single crochet made, which was right here. Beautiful. So now we are ready to work on the body of our sweater. You can see here's the neck, here's our armholes, lay it flat like this. The armholes should be perfectly positioned on either side of the seam down here. So now we are ready to add on for the body before we start doing that taper on the back end. So for the first round of the body, we're going to turn going to slip stitch in the first actual stitch, which is this one right here. The, that other stitch, remember, is your join. So slip stitch there. We're going to do a berry in this next single crochet. Slip. We're going to repeat those two steps all the way around.
Now since we started this round with a slip stitch right here, we're going to end with a berry right here. Chain one to close that berry, and then we're going to join to the first stitch here. Nice. So now we are ready for round 10, or the second round of the body. We're going to turn, we're gonna do that slip stitch in the top of that berry, in the larger side of that, single crochet. Slip stitch, single. And since we started this round with a slip stitch, we will end with a single crochet. And with that single crochet and join to the slip stitch. Beautiful. For the third round of the body, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to do a berry in this first stitch here. And then slip and berry. and slip. Repeat those all the way around and since we started with a berry we're going to end with a slip stitch. Slip stitch in the final and join to that first berry. Excellent and now we are ready for our final repeat the for row for the body. We have four repeat rows. We have a round well, it depends on the size you're making, but we have a 9, 10, 11, 12, and then we'll do 9, 10, 11, 12. So these four rows are going to repeat, be repeated in order um, for varying number of times depending on the size that you are making. So we're going to chain one and turn, and we're going to place our single crochet in that first slip stitch there. And then we're going to do our slip stitch single. When we get all the way around, we are ending with a slip stitch in that berry, and we are going to join to the top of that single crochet there. Beautiful. And so those are those four repeat rows. So for the extra, extra, extra small that I am working up right here, where I'm going to do those four rows one more time. So I'm going to do another row 9, 10, 11, 12. And if you have a wiener dog or a dachshund or some kind of mix that is very long, um, a long dog, you can add as many rows as you want to in this portion here, as long as you're adding them in multiples of four. So you can do four, eight, 12, 16, 16, however many extra rows you need just until it covers the bottom of their rib cage where their belly starts to swoop back up that's when we start the body taper so I'm going to add these four more rounds exactly like I just did and then we will hook up to begin that body taper So here I have finished adding the body rows to my extra, extra, extra small, and I am ready to start on my body taper. So that body taper, we're going to take it and we're just going to bring it all the way back up here to the, so that there's a nice smaller width across the back of their um, behind where their tail starts. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn we're going to slip stitch as many times as stated, and for the all of the tiny sweater sizes, we are going to do that three times. So in my first stitch, slip stitch, in the second stitch, slip stitch, and in the third slip stitch, we're going to slip stitch. Now we're going to do a berry in the next single crochet. and slip stitch in the next.
When we're doing this body taper, it tells you how many times to do these berries or how many berries you need. And where we end, we should have a mirror image on either side of the seam. So since we started with three slip stitches, we should have three stitches remaining when we get to the end of this round or row. Let's see how we're doing. I believe I need one more. So I should have, at the end of this round, I should have 14 berries total. So this is going to be the first one. Twelve. So I need two more. This should be my final berry. And I'm going to slip stitch. And then I should have those three open stitches before my, my seam here at the bottom. So perfect. Now I've got started right here, ended right here. We're going to continue to narrow this down. So for our alternating row of the um, decreases, we're going to turn. We're going to skip the very first stitch, which is this one right here. We're going to skip that, and we're going to slip stitch in the top of the first berry, which again, we always go into the bigger portion here. So this is what we're doing there. Beautiful. Now I'm going to single crochet and slip stitch my way to the end of this row. When I get to this last berry here, I'm going to do my slip stitch in that berry there, and now I am finished with that row, and I am ready to start my next row of berries. So in order to do that, I'm going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip this first stitch here, which was that slip stitch, and I'm going to bury in that single crochet. Slip, bury, and slip. We're going to alternate those all the way to the end of the row. At the end of this row, we should end with a slip stitch. So we've got one berry here. And then the slip stitch in this row, or in this stitch here. And that is the end of that row. So now we are just going to alternate these two rows so that we continue to grow the taper out this way. So let's do this together one more time. We're going to skip this very first one and we're going to slip stitch in the top of the first berry. So turn, go into that berry there, slip, and single and continue all the way across the row. You can see that we're getting to the end here. I'm going to place my final slip stitch in the top of that berry there, and that is the end of that row. Now I'm going to alternate that row with our berry row. So we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip that first stitch and do a berry in the next. And by doing these skipping, at the beginning of every row, how we skip one stitch, depending on how we start that row, right? By doing that, we are removing one berry every time we make a berry stitch row. So for the tiny sizes, I'm going to end for the extra, extra, extra small. I'm going to continue decreasing these berries until I end with only eight berries. So I'm going to continue knocking these off, slip stitch in that final, and now I'm ready to do my skip slip stitch in the top of that first berry. And I'm going to alternate these two rows, decreasing by one berry stitch each row until I get down to where I only have those eight berries remaining. 
When we get to where we are finished with our decreasing or this body taper, we're going to rotate and we're going to chain one and single crochet just around this opening here, just to really kind of clean things up. So it does not matter where you place those stitches so much as that you remain consistent in the placement of them. So I like to go, I'm going through the side of this stitch here, just like this, and now I'm going to go into the base of this stitch here where that little hole is. And the side of this half double, or not half double, but the side of this stitch here, and then in the base of this stitch here. And when you get to these slip stitches, you're just gonna go around them the best that you can. You might need to grab more of the stitch, so one loop of the actual row there, make that a little bit smaller. We're just doing our single crochets just to clean up this opening. And now when we get to the other side here, we're gonna start working up these row ends. I go in this one here. And again, as long as you remain consistent, it does not really matter. The base of that stitch there and the side of that berry there. And the base of that stitch there and that berry there. When you get to the top, go ahead and go into each one of these stitches across the top of your piece. And now in order to fasten off, I'm going to go ahead and clip my yarn over here. I'm going to pull this on through and I'm going to weave in my ends using the invisible join method. So I'm going to find that first stitch made here, go front to back, pull that through, hold this tail down with your thumb. Where this one came out of, we're going to go down into the same one and out the back and that creates a stitch looking join instead of just a big gnarly knot. So then we're going to go on the inside and weave in these yarn tails Nice and securely. We'll go ahead and clip that and we are finished. That is all there is to these tiny little sweaters. Aren't these freaking adorable? Absolutely love them. This one looks like a corn on the cob. We'll see how she looks in her little sweater. Thank you all for watching with me and thank you for crocheting with me and I will crochet with you soon. Thanks for watching.